Yeah, I, it's it's going to be really interesting because it does seem that AI will put a big, big test, a stress test into our own conception of meaning from ourselves. I, I agree with that. I, I agree. Depending on how they apply AI to the frontiers of neuroscience, uh, human physiology, human health. Oh, yeah. And perhaps a big challenge will be to our workplace. You know, for many millions of people, they find meaning through their work. And it seems that AI can also displace many people and out of... No, I don't think it will displace the workplace differently than how the workplace has already been displaced since the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. There's no one makes horse-drawn carriages anymore. (laughs) There's no one whose job it is to clean up horse manure in the street. These were full-time jobs. There there are people who made horse feed. There are people who design horse carriage parking lots. They don't, those jobs don't exist anymore. And no one is looking, no one is sorry about that. (laughs) Okay? Yeah. Um, And so the, yes, it will displace jobs as technology has always displaced jobs. Always. And and if it displaced jobs and other jobs don't open up to replace them, then you're going to need some kind of universal basic income because otherwise no one will have money to buy the products being made by the non-people. Wow. And in a way, I'm kind of hopeful in a way that AI will take the boring jobs out of our hands because... Technology has already done that. There, there, you know how many assembly lines are fully occupied by people anymore? Yeah. All right. There's a robot in there somewhere, if not the entire sequence. So these are tedious jobs. That, by the way, computers have taken over the tedious jobs in my field, as they should have, as we hoped they would. So you know, when AI showed up on our doorstep, we didn't go running for the hills. We mm-hmm. fully embraced it. Yeah. So I'm not as fearful of AI as so many others are on that frontier. In a way, it also will open our doors to contemplate the overview effect from here, no? To to also contemplate our time on our time on Earth and engage in activities that bring us awe, that bring us inspiration. For example, you know, I went for a walk the other day and I was struck with awe and beauty like you describe in Stereo Messenger that even though I don't understand the wind, I don't know. I, I, it's, I'm. I don't know what the wind is, but it was striking me, you know. And I found I found a new sense of awe with life itself. And now that we may not be so caught up in work, we can reconnect in a way with. Yeah. That's a fascinating prediction that would be re- really transformative if it comes true. So, just to be clear about what's going on with work. If you go back to, was it the 1950s or 60s, as automation became more and more prevalent, people were saying, oh, we will no longer need a five-day work week. We'll have a three-day work week. And what they were imagining was that there was a fixed amount of work that needed to be done. And then when you have machines do it, then there's nothing left for you to do. What they did not consider is that if machines do the easy task, now you can do other work and make even more money than you did. You still work the five days, but now you make five days worth of money in three days, and now you make extra money in those other two days because of the automation. No one saw that coming. They could have, but they didn't. So so, uh, who knows what new tasks will await us that AI cannot really do. Maybe it'll create greater value in construction workers or artisanry or uh, plumbing. (laughs) Yeah. Is AI fixing my plumbing? Not anytime soon, I don't think. Uh, It might be able to diagnose it, but they're not going to come down, bend over with a wrench and fix it with the butt crack showing in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Fixing (laughs) fixing my, you know, my drain trap. No. Perhaps, like like you say, one of the things that really gets me excited about AI is that we might 
see more Vincent van Gogh's starry nights, you know, like the one that's in your background, we will see more emergence of, of artistry and creativity and, you know, another way of, of, exp of honoring our time on earth and, you know, connecting with the cosmos itself is our creative outputs. People will... Yeah, I, that's a beautiful way to say it, to honor our time on, on earth is to apply our creative mind to everything we do yeah. and that we dream of and that we desire. So I, that's a brilliant way to think about it. I agree. Yeah, and it, that that idea in itself, I've been I've been exploring it. I've been writing on on that philosophy that our greatest way of of honoring our time on Earth is through our creativity. Because what you do, Doctor Tyson, in writing Starry Messenger or conveying your words here, they're more than just words. They're poetry. They're uh, those kind of intangibles in in the world. Even though AI may write a brilliant uh, piece of, of of a poem, it will never put into words the poem that 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 you mentioned on Siri Messenger from Joey Skilmer, the poem of a tree. It will never describe with words the awe that only God can make a tree. And knowing that, for example, you wrote Siri Messenger, I'm connecting with you through our humanity. If I, if you would have put up an asterisk, you know, like when Barry Bonds hit his all-time record home runs with steroids using, and you use an asterisk with your with your book saying that it was written by AI, it would just be, it wouldn't feel as it would subtract from something, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's it, very interesting. Well, we'll see. We'll see what what comes of it all. And keep in mind, AI. Um, Yeah, it, it can write a poem, but usually you, you say write a poem in the style of somebody. Right. But if I say write a poem in the style of someone yet to be born, I, I don't know what it will do. Wow. How will it respond? If it's total knowledge base, it's just what we've put on the internet. Um, And if there's somebody who's not yet on the internet, whose manuscripts I just found, you know, in ancient from France, and I say... Uh, write me poems in the style of this poet. They said, I don't, who is that? I don't know. Or might invent something and get it wrong because it's never seen it because it's not yet on the internet. We as humans are not limited to the internet. We're limited to the, only by the boundlessness of our own creativity, mm. which is what made the internet in the first place. Wow. 